does 50-50 make sense from a spiritual standpoint? So this is a pretty cool topic. I'm interested. I think about this quite a lot and I've learned quite a lot about this. I've discussed quite a bit of it on my Patreon. So today we'll just do a little more of a surface level definition. We're not going to go into very deep tantric principles, but it was inspired by, um, as I said, I had a, I had a basically a morning group call this today. So uh, somebody said, you know, it's really frustrating when I'm dating and I say like the way to impress me is to make dinner reservations. And I keep getting asked out for walks and coffee dates, which I'm not clearly interested in. Like they're not picking up the vibe that I'm putting down, you know? And I thought, you know, it's so interesting. There are so many esoteric principles to romance as well as wealth, and they're very, very connected. So as I said, I'm not going to go into very deep principles, but there is some truth to this. And there is some few, but some exceptions, though they do exist. So fun fact, uh, I want to make a video on men and how focus is really important to the male experience or path in life. Um, Just experience. I don't know how else to put it. I suppose the best way for a man to channel his mental faculties to get what he wants from life. Okay. And I'm saying this because I'm a big fan of Napoleon Hill. One of his books is staring me in the face, the master key to riches. And um, it was inspired basically by that book, a chapter of that book called sexual or it's basically, it's about sexual uh, transmutation. So it was originally taken out when the book was published because people were a bit sensitive about that topic. And I know in the ways that the original manuscript was actually censored, he used words like vibration and, you know, publishers thought this is insane. No one's going to go for this. This is like blasphemy. So, uh, but we now know it to be true. Okay. And now the question is, what about women? Does it make sense for a woman to be a receiver all the time? Okay, the answer to this is yes, 100% of all things, not just material provision, of all things. The man must pour into her endlessly and generously of all of his faculties, okay? Attention, focus, care, being mindful, being respectful, very demure, okay? We're mindful of why God made us a woman or why God made you a man, very demure, (laughs) If you don't know Jules on TikTok, a little TikTok reference, but it's funny and I like it. So in any case, there are minor exceptions, as I mentioned. So first of all, let's get into why this makes sense from an energetic perspective. As I mentioned, I have extensively studied Eastern practices, beliefs, Western, everything, all old, new and everything in between. And a woman's energy is a magnifying energy. This is why women are lunar. The moon reflects the sun, but it needs a source of light. So woman needs a source of something. Attention, affection, devotion, care, faithfulness, financials, etc. And when received, it amplifies. Okay, it glows. It makes more. And then it reflects it back to you. So you get more. And so on... When you only use the logical mind to hear that, as a lot of really inexperienced people in life do, we know there's some type of magic or almost like kismet to life, little synchronicity, or it reminds me of Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist, like things we just can't explain. But the hand of God is always at work, okay? So it's like we can't see it, but its effects can be felt. And by the time it's seen, we can justify it and say, oh, that would have happened anyway. That's perfectly logical. It's not. Something put it into motion once upon a time, a bit of inspiration or something you wouldn't have normally done. You made a left when you would normally have made a right, and then you ended up at the perfect place, met the perfect person, and it all just worked out. Joe Dispenza in his book, Becoming Supernatural, has an amazing um, chapter where he explains how his son was able to uh, attract the job of his dreams. If you haven't read it, I'll tell it to you really quickly, but um, it's not really relevant to this, but it's very fascinating how um, he wanted a specific role and he called his dad and his dad was like, I really wanted him to figure it out. Like, of course, he could just sign him a check, but he's like, I just want him to figure it out. I want him to know he could do it. And that's how I feel. I want my children to know in principle how powerful they are. If you give them a resource, they'll just blow through it. They're not going to learn anything. This is why I'm never impressed by, I'm never jealous nor impressed by people who are born into wealth because it's neither here nor there as far as I'm concerned. I'm only interested in what you're doing. It's one of the reasons I really love Paris Hilton because she had no reason to be hardworking and yet she chose to. <laughs> and many people like that do exist. So... He said, you know, like, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it. And he, at this point, he was like sleeping on friends' couches and he had this requirement. He wanted to whatever, like lead his own team, work in this industry. Um, and then he'd never done that before. He wasn't really qualified, but he's what he really wanted. He wanted to be in charge. He wanted to manage. He had this creative vision. He wanted freedom and he wanted a certain amount of money. 
So he stuck by it. So he said, I want you to take a piece of paper. All right, take a piece of paper, I'm trying to find a blank piece of paper. And he said, um, put like a letter at the top in the middle that symbolizes job. So he put the letter J, some squigglies around it to imply it has like uh, an org field or a quantum field. And then on one side of the paper, you write what that job would feel like or like what it is that you want. And then the other side, like what that feels like, power, freedom, whatevs. And lo long story short, this kid or young man at the time when walking by the beach and he decided to pop into a random surf shop that he was fond of. And lo and behold, I believe it was like a CEO or a founder of his favorite um, surfing company was just there just in front of him talking to one of the employees. And he like could not believe it, you know, and he roped himself into the conversation and the man was like, well, what do you do? I don't know what he does. Like maybe something with computers, graphic design. I don't remember, but he told him and he says, and this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. This is how much I want to get paid. And he literally just gave him a job. Like, didn't interview, didn't go through all the rigmarole. He just got it, like, just out of the ether, boom, it fell into his lap. So women, in a sense, when women set their intention on something, this is kind of how life unfolds. Not women, all human beings. But women are particularly intuitive, okay? So this is why people say, um, you know, like, if you make a woman mad, even if you never speak to her again, it's like there's some weird repercussion, <laughs> almost. Or a woman's intuition will always know something is wrong. Or if she dreams it, like it will, it will actually happen, you know. So this is one of the reasons. But basically, you need a source of something and then you can multiply it. Basically like children, quite literally, very biological example. But there is truth in this. And this works better. So if you're looking at it on the intellectual level, you're thinking, oh, like this dude's a sucker. He takes care of his wife. How lame. You don't see all the things working behind the scenes, how he's getting a benefit from that. And again, I don't mean an intellectual benefit, like she cooks and cleans and rears his children. I mean the spiritual synergy of those two people working together and what that creates. So we're going to be very mindful, we're going to be very respectful, and just assume it's a healthy <laughs> symbiosis, it's a healthy relationship. But basically, there is a lot of truth to this. Now, there are minor exceptions. So... Um, another thing I want to add, when people ask me, do I ever think it's unfair? I don't even, like, I can reach through history as far back as I wish. You know, you will never find a shred of evidence to the contrary. This is the way things have always been. It's the way that it makes sense to be. But I don't need to do that. I have another theory. I believe that if you, through your overaction, overdo, even out of the context of dating and marriage, etc., um, you, I want to say, deprive that person um, the experience to develop something in themselves. Like, I don't like to enable weak behavior. And that sounds harsh. I can't, like, really reach for the perfect words. It's a very long day. I'm very tired. But basically, think about it like this. You know, if um, if you keep taking the steering wheel and saying, I'll just do it, it's easier, and someone's trying to learn how to drive, they'll never be a good driver. So if you're always like, I'll do everything for you because you love me and you give me stuff, it's like, do you don't have to, you know, let them figure things out, you know? So I feel like one of the things that by stepping in to pay for half the rent, by being what people call an equal partner, they only mean that in the material. You see, it's funny. They don't really mean that emotionally. They don't mean that socially, uh, child rearing. Clearly not biologically. Their role is like not even 1%. Yours is 99.999% of the, of the work. And theirs doesn't even work. It's the fun part, you know? <laughs> so uh, that keep that in mind. Do not deprive them of the experience of realizing the fullness of their manhood and their potential and the power that comes from responsibility. You grow in power the more you take on you feel better about yourself. You accomplish more. So I don't want to put you down. I don't want to assume that you're weakling. I don't want to assume that you can't do something. I'm the opposite. Okay. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I had tough parents growing up, but I just, I would never, no one ever made excuses for me. And I'm so glad that I turned out the way I did because I see that you can be a functioning whole human being in the world. Right. Anyhow. So that's the first thing. The other thing is the exceptions. There are some exceptions. Okay. And it's usually, um, there are archetypes there are archetypes in everything psychology, astrology, tarot, everything. Anybody can think of an archetype, but there's a, a queen archetype. And this is my archetype. So this is the archetype where I could marry a billionaire tonight or tomorrow. That's all well and good. That will lose its shine very quickly. Not for any other, I have nothing to prove. I'm not a particularly proud person or an arrogant person. Not that arrogant, <laughs> quasi arrogant, <laughs> a little proud. 
but um, it's my own self-fulfillment. I'm busy because I like to be busy. I work because I like to work. So it's not about the money. It's about uh, just my day-to-day life. I just enjoy utility. I enjoy being useful. I believe I was, I'm put here to live to serve humanity and I will live to serve and that's fine with me. I'm okay with that. You know, I don't question God ever. So that's fine. So it's not about the money. I could take, uh, you know, someone that would relieve me of any and all burdens imagined and real. And that doesn't change my career trajectory. I still have ambition. I still have focus. I'm going the way that I'm going. If you get in the way, there's going to be a problem, you know, (laughs) so you just have to cheer me on and that's fine. So that in that sense, not about provision is about understanding. So there's some archetypes that where women are a little bit more dominant or a little bit more in the role where they lead. Um, and I do have, uh, one friend who's a very, very, um, successful in her very type A field. And so is her husband, but she's a lot more successful than him. And her first husband could not stand that. And she's very well connected in this, like just sent him over the edge that he, if he felt it was belittling him in her current marriage, um, she says, my only rule is that I lead financially because I'm financially responsible and I'm very good with money. And my first husband didn't know anything about money and it could have ruined us. I'm not doing that. And he said, that's fine. So he's, you know, like for all intents and purposes, you know, he adores her. Everything's well and good. They live very well together. Everything's amazing. But her one thing is, you know, when he gets paid, he just doesn't even question. He gives her all the money. Like, and then she like portions off what goes where, and then he gets whatever's left over. He gets to do whatever he wants with, but that's rare. Okay. Um, but it's doable, but it's specific archetypes. Like she's very, very, um, like emperor like and, and, uh, warrior like, you know, so, but she's still soft and feminine in other ways. Okay. So there's a balance to these things. Okay. So look beyond the intellectual factor in the social component, the emotional component, the physical component, the romantic component, the family component. Okay. So most people are never going to be passive across the board or dominant across the board. There's levels to these things. Okay. So in any case, esoterically, yes, this holds a lot of truth that when men provide externally, uh, external provisions like psychological safety, which is the most important thing to a lady is not to be burdened or threatened, intimidated by the things of the world. Um, even mundane things, actually, women don't care very much for the mundane. They enjoy, you know, self-expression and living in the flow and having a supportive partner. So I'll give you a very simple example. It's so stupid. It's just like a small, stupid thing, but, um, my previous partner could never understand this. Like it was always like his way or the highway, but this got tired, like very quick. And I'm not like, I have high self-esteem. So no one talks to me like I'm a dummy. I'm just like, what are you? And I'm not even mean. So I was very confused by this, <laughs> but it was so stupid. Um, if, if, for example, like, let's say it was like a Monday and he's like, what are you doing this weekend? I'll say nothing. Like I'm studying. I'm going to go for a run. I'm like, well, what are you going to do? Like, I, I don't know. That's like five days away. I'll know when I get closer. Like you also don't know what's going to happen. Like you can make plans and something, something occurs, you know? And he just like had to know. It was like a form of bullying. It was so strange. And I said to him, I don't care what I do on the weekend. As long as I eat and sleep, I'll fill my time. Like I I have things to do all the time. Like if you have something to do, go do it. But why do you have to, you know, for him, it was like, this is happening at this time. It's happening. It was very like male and matter of fact. And I said, I'll do what I feel like doing. I might be in my ovulation phase. I might be in my period phase. Like I might need more rest. Like your body needs a lot more rest when you're on your flow. Like he couldn't understand that. He just thought like you were lazy or making it up, you know? And I just thought that doesn't work here. You know, like you are not emotionally tender. You don't aim to be understanding. So no amount of money in the world is going to rope you in with someone like that who just debases your humanity and basically has no notion of decency. So in any case, you have to factor in, like, I like to live intuitively. I'm not a dummy. Like, I keep a schedule. I can do my earthly things that need doing. But when it comes to me in the world, I need a buffer. I need someone who allows me to feel like a woman, feel like the person that I need to be, you know, cares about the things I care about. That psychological safety is first and foremost, I would say for all women, whether they know it or not, the money is secondary to that. It's still just as important, but it actually goes in reverse order. And most people think like, if you give me the money, I'll feel safe with you. No, you actually have to make me feel safe because anybody can give you money. Any lunatic can, you know, trick you and coerce you. You have to be really 
to be mindful. You have to be respectful. There's safety. We have to take care of ourselves. Okay. So that sounded like HRH collection. I'm like ourselves. Okay. You dummy. Just joking. But you have to, you know, link up with someone that makes you feel protected. And until that happens, basically, Until that occurs, you're always going to feel a little bit like caged off. You know, you can't fully self-express. You can't fully go with the flow. You can't fully fall in love. So yes, these um, online 50-50 theories actually do hold a lot of truth. Of course, there are exceptions. Like, please, like, let's use media literacy and a little bit of like nuance and deep thinking. You know, if if you were married to a sole provider who was self-employed and then, you know, God forbid, they you know, on the way to work, something happened to them and they couldn't work. Well, like after they got better, if they weren't fully recovered, obviously like you love that person, you're going to do something so you can stay afloat and keep your family fed. Right. And I know people are going to say most men would do that for women. I'm not talking about the men. I'm talking about, I know what women are like. Women are strong. Okay. (laughs) And, um, yeah, it's just, it's really interesting. So women have a more scattered energy, esoterically where men have a more singular energy it's like an arrow or like a laser beam is the way I see it women is more like an ocean or trees just waving in the wind like free willy-nilly so when someone focuses in on you entirely and pours into you completely that is when you start to reflect that back and truly uh, a partner is a woman is a reflection of her partner so when a woman's walking around looking a little tired a little bit grumpy it's truly just uh, the way that you know she's only reflecting what the sun is giving her the man the solar energy so I can't even say it's it's her fault if she stays but otherwise it's not her fault <laughs> but that's it because we all make our choices and um yeah so that's an interesting uh visual and I hope that makes a lot more sense than uh just being really like down to the dollar matter of fact like okay that matters but that is uh according to our history as a species that is the base requirement that is only the beginning so if you let's say you're like whatever 30 and you want to get married you know you need housing You need to know, am I going to have to work for how long? Can I stay home with the kids? Like I need that in writing, you know, you need that security and, um, you have to understand that's just the basic, the the psychological and emotional safety is really where it's at. That is the juice of life. And you, and um, as I'm going to mention in the video for the, um, benefit to a man, for being faithful and not doing 50 50 is immense. It's massive, you know, but for them, it's basically getting their mental and sexual energies in focus. Okay. So the, and this is another thing you'll see a lot of the times in religious orders, exoteric religion, as well as esoteric belief, there's a giant disconnect for methods and things like this. And I feel a little bit, sometimes a little bit like unsure if I want to say it out loud, cause I don't want to get jumped by the new age people. You know? <laughs> which is okay. I'm not judging, but, um, the, I'll call it spiritual methods. They vary. I don't mean individual. I mean, by, by sex. So a man's spiritual journey is defined by how much he is willing to deprive himself. Okay. You see this a lot in like yogis and Eastern gurus who go, uh, who fast and things like that. And obviously in modern time in like Abrahamic religions, there's an emphasis upon fasting and self deprivation or like uh, Catholic priests, like they don't marry, uh, they're celibate an example. Okay. That formula does not accelerate a woman's spiritual evolution. A woman's spiritual evolution is different. It actually looks different. So if you're interested in like understanding these things better to improve whatever your money, your your romantic life, your health, the way you feel about yourself, you want to change your life, etc. Don't, uh, this is what I did. This is why I know why it doesn't work. Okay. You, you read a lot of spiritual books and I love them. I think against them, like Dr. Wayne Dyer, um, whoever else. Okay. I've read so many and, and so many, um, like books on religion, etc. But anything written by a man, pretty much just assume it's for a man, unless it's directed at women, unless it's directed. I have one here, actually, Osho, I believe. Um, I read this uh, many, many years ago, about a decade ago now, maybe just a little less. But yeah, it's uh, 
the book of women. Okay. It's great. I really enjoy this. It kind of, at the time that I read it, I was a lot younger. So it really like, wow, I never thought of it that way. It kind of blew my mind. I didn't realize there was so much depth to femininity. No one had ever taught me. No one ever taught me. No, no one's probably taught most people, especially in the West. But um, yeah, there's differences to how we live our lives. And so there's differences to how we make things work. Okay. And it's not to say that one is better than the other. They're just different and that's okay. I'm not offended by that. Like I'm female. I don't know why people get so offended and jump at these like trigger words. This means nothing to me. I didn't make it up. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't define me, you know? And, um, there's a little bit of duality as well, where men are like, oh, like you're too independent. You're too uh, driven by accomplishments. And when I say, okay, well, then do you want to take care of me? They choke you out and not literally, God forbid, you know, but they're like, uh, oh, so you just want me for my money. You're your gold digger. It's like, well, what do you, you don't even know what you want. What do you want then? What do you want? Do you want a hard woman or do you want a soft woman? Pick one. Cause they both come with a price, you know, cause if I, if I'm outdoing you on every level, professionally, academically, if I'm more cultivated and accomplished, then you have to deal with it. Like you can't be insecure and scared. Okay. And if you've done more than I have, then you can't complain because I'm not, I don't care what you're doing. Like my, my ex who was like, well, what, what are we doing? This, this, this. We're going to walk on Saturday 11 and Sunday we'll have nachos. And then Monday we'll have, who cares? Like I'll figure it out when I get there. We're not going to starve. We're going to eat like all like, calm down, you know? <laughs> so which, which one do you want? Okay. So you have to kind of reflect on that, but there is definitely a connection to this. And you can oftentimes see it in birth charts too. Sometimes if you're in- interested in that, um, but yeah, it all connects back and it does actually hold truth. And I always felt that intuitively, but I couldn't articulate it. I couldn't really uh, find any sources or any sort of intellectual track. I just felt it in my soul. I just knew it to be the truth. And I knew it wasn't the truth for me, but I know it is the truth, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to also obviously upload the male version of how men can prosper through focusing and channeling. I would call it... Um, cultivating their sexual energy, but I'm not going to talk about that on YouTube. That'll probably be reserved for private because I do talk a lot on Patreon about cultivating female sexual energy. And if you're interested in that, I mention this book all the time. Um, Montauk Chia, go find his book. Him and his wife wrote this book like decades ago and it it still stands. It's still phenomenal. I think he's still doing um, videos on his YouTube. I think he's still making videos on TikTok. So you can go learn about that, but there are principles. Basically you can, um, You can measure a man's stamina and therefore his generosity and how he's going to treat you just by looking at them. And I don't mean appearance in terms of like attractiveness. I actually mean, you know, the meridians, the energy centers of the body, depending on if they're functioning optimally, underactive or overactive, you're going to have certain physical features or physical symptoms. Like it shows up on you, right? Like um, acne can be uh, linked to the liver, which is unexpressed anger. Okay, for example, or shame, problems with shame. So I'm not saying that, that you use it to judge people, but you can kind of tell right away, like there's a particular male characteristic that a lot of men are paranoid about. I've made a video on it here uh, using Edgar Cayce's uh, Natural Remedies. uh, And it will tell you that he has misspent his sexual energy most of his life. And so what could he possibly pour into you? And I don't mean that just physically. I mean, that links to everything. Because I said on TikTok months ago, if a person who's cheap with money, they're cheap with everything else. They're cheap with love. They're cheap with their time, their compliments, their care. They can never be tender towards you because they're just stingy. It's mean in their spirit, you know? And I'm really glad that took off because I've seen other people talk about it. And I, I'm glad like we're waking up. And I just don't mean in the context of dating. Don't even waste your time with a friend like that. You know, they're like, God forbid you get a 20 out of their hands. You can take a cab home. They'd rather see you walk. They'd be like, I'd be happier with the $20 piece. Not demure, not mindful, not respectful, not safe. (laughs) We're not doing that. So anyways, um, I can go deeper into this. Oh my God, 23 minutes. All those degrees in yapology. Okay, I'm a PhD in yap. (laughs) Thank you for listening. I hope that makes sense. So honestly, just think about it like that. You reflect what you get. You multiply what you get. If you can't, you can't give back if something if someone hasn't given you something to begin with. I hope that makes a lot of sense. So the 50-50 thing means you can only ever reciprocate at a 50% level energetically. So if someone takes issue with that, they're really taking issue with themselves. So don't ever take it personally. Just this doesn't work for me. Ciao. Godspeed. I love you all, you know. See you later. And then I'll do the uh, male version uh, another time. I hope sooner rather than later, but I have an exam in a week. So I'm going to try to get it in before then. If I don't, I do what I say I'll do one way or another. So I'll see you here. I love you all. Bye for now. And I hope you had a really good weekend. Bye.